So I want to share with you something that has come across my path a couple times um, in the last probably two months. And it's pretty important. It's the book, The Four Agreements. And they, I'm going to share with you the four agreements that's actually in the book. And then I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the other side of that. So the first one, the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. And, you know, speak your, you speak your truth with integrity and with calmness, you know, never speak um, out of anger or being mean with anyone. And then use your word um, to speak against, uh, or never use your word, actually avoid using your word to speak against yourself or anyone else. And that's what's really important because what you put out there into the world will come to fruition. You know, if you speak, um, you know, ill on someone, it, it could possibly happen to them or it could turn around and happen to you. So, you know, we all want to be very careful and cautious with how we approach our relationships, whether it be in the workplace or whether it be in our personal relationship, you know, um, and then use your power of, of your word in the direction of truth and love. That was, that's the first agreement. And I just love that because I really try very hard to be impeccable with my word, try to do what I do, what I'm saying that I'm going to do and not do what I'm saying I'm not going to do. And that's one thing that I think I've always been though. And then, and I read this book, God, I was probably in my thirties, which was a very long time ago. Um, and then number two, the second agreement is don't take anything personal. And I was speaking with my boss and this is one that's difficult for her. And she advised me to do the same. And I could see where there was two situations in the office where I definitely um, walked away feeling that it was more of a personal um, situation. And it's hard to put that aside. But what I found through that um, is that you have to remember that everybody is, everybody's here to walk a path. Now, whether we enjoy that path along with them, that's a whole nother issue. You know, we don't have to walk a path that doesn't feel healthy to us. We don't have to sit and walk a path with others that does not feed us, right? You don't want to walk a path that's going to tear you down into an untruth or into um, something that doesn't fit, that's, that, that just doesn't feel right to you. Um, but, but what you do have to do is even though it may not be for you that, that, you know, when you are walking this path and you're trying not to take anything personal, it's not always easy, but it can be done. You know, you have to walk, be able to walk away. You have to be able to know your value and your worth. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to act immediately. You know, I've seen people just, you know, quit teams, quit jobs, quit, you know, leave relationships immediately. Well, that doesn't really serve you either. But what you can do is you can, you can start to make plans to move on. So, you know, what others say and do is just a projection of their own, um, reality, their dreams, their, um, their knowledge, right? We all come to, to our relationships, whether it be personal business, um, volunteering, whatever the case is, even with our own children, right? We all come with our own set of knowledge, values, history, and whatever we learned in that history is what made us who we are. And sometimes that history and their history, they don't match. And that's not a flaw on your part. And it's not a flaw on their part. It's just the, the two values don't match. And, you know, that's when relationships break down, right? One person um, values one thing and another person values something completely different. And the, the two just can't seem to make things work. You know, and, but what's most important is you really have to make yourself immune 
to the opinions of others. You have to really dig deep and know where you're coming from, what's important to you and who you are. You know, and if you believe that you're impeccable with your word and you try not to make assumptions, which is um, the, um, the third agreement, and that you always try to do your best, which is also the fourth agreement, then it's very easy not to take things personal. It becomes easier. It's not, not completely easy, but it becomes easier. You know, it's really, um, I would have to say that it's a humbling stance to not be a victim. You know, there was a time in my life where, you know, I did feel like a victim. I felt like a victim growing up and it took a really long time to work through that. And my poor sisters, you know, especially one of them had to listen to a lot of it as, as we were growing and as we were maturing and working through some of the things that, um, that I had gone through. Now she had lived, even though we grew up in the same house, she actually lived a completely different life than I did. And that is possible. And so, um, you know, she had, to, she didn't have to, but she chose to be that sounding board for me to be able to get that out and work through some of the things that I had experienced. And I needed that because that helped me to get out of that victim stance. I didn't want to be that perpetual victim for the rest of my life. It was ridiculous. So, um, you know, I was able to, to start to see things differently and to realize that not only did I have my own set of um, beliefs and values and was very strong minded, but my parents did too, that they had reasons for doing some of the things that they did. Some of that made, you know, the reasons why they made the choices that they made. Now, was it easy not to take those kinds of choices personal? Nope. It was very hard, especially as a little kid growing up. You don't, you don't always see what, um, what you need to see. You know, you grow up, you, you feel that victim, you, you, you feel like you were attacked, but there, there are people that live right in your house that are supposed to be loving and caring and, um, nurturing, but they weren't right. And so what you wind up um, having to process through is realizing at some point that they only did as good as they knew. Right. And that's when you start to realize you, you can forgive people for the problems that they have, um, shown in your life. And I wouldn't say gave in your life, but definitely that had shown in your life. And that's, that was where I started to make the most growth was when I was able to actually forgive them for, um, some of the things that had happened. And, um, I mean, it wasn't anything horrible, but it definitely was an, an emotional way to grow up and not, not in a good way. And so, um, I guess I would say that, you know, when you can take that and, and bring that into your other relationships, into your work environment, you're going to grow exponentially because you can approach the situation and not be a victim. Now, that's not to say that certain things aren't going to hurt. They are. And that's okay. You're human. It's okay to feel those emotions, but not to bottle it up and definitely not to re overreact to them. You can feel the emotions and let it flow through you and then just move on. You're not a victim. You don't have to stand in a victim stance. You don't have to continually play and, and overplay these kinds of um, scenarios in your life. It's, it's unnecessary. It's very easy to just let it flow out. And, uh, and especially, like I said, when you know your worth, not taking anything personal is so much easier because you know whether you are able to work through the situation or whether it is time for you to move on from the situation. And when you are confident enough in yourself and in your abilities and your value and your um, strengths, it's that's where your growth is. That's where the, you, that you don't no longer have to stay in that victim uh, position.
You know, you have the power. You have the power to stay. You have the power to go. You have the power to try to work it out. You have the power to say, screw it. I'm not going to work it out at all. I don't need to talk about this. I don't need to even address it. Um, and so that's where I think the biggest change starts to happen, you know, and then not to make assumptions. That has been the biggest change for me. You know, when I read this, when I was in my thirties, that, that actually helped me a lot. You know, it was difficult not to take things personal in the beginning, but as you work through it and you work these um, these four agreements throughout your life and you show up every day with these in mind, it becomes so much easier and not to make assumptions. It has said, um, you know, find the courage to ask questions when you need to ask questions, you know, express what you really want. And it was never super easy for me to ask for what I wanted. And I'm still learning to do that. I think, I think I'll probably have to learn that until the day I die. Um, but I did learn how to communicate clearer. You know, I'm very particular in how I choose my words and what I say to people when I'm speaking. Um, if I choose to speak, it's because it's something that I have considered and this is what I want to share with you. Um, and I think that that's, that's super important that, you know, I try to give people the opportunity to show up how they want to show up, give them the opportunity to, um, you know, show me who they are. Right. And so, um, I think it helps to avoid any kind of misunderstandings. If you allow people to just be who they are, not to make assumptions uh, upon them, your opinions upon them and just let them be, um, and then that empowers you as well, because you get to choose at that point, whether the person that's showing up the way you want the, you know, is that how you want to react with people in your life or not? Because if it's not, move on. You know, there's, there's doesn't have to be hard feelings because not everybody is for everybody and not everybody that's in your life right now is going to remain in your life right now. And that's okay. So. Um, I think to, to make a complete transformation, it's really important like to communicate as clearly as you can. And when you show up authentically, when you show up with, um, no assumptions and you don't try to control others, that is when your life is going to change. It's going to change drastically. And mine did a hundred percent. I showed up with an open heart. I allow people to show up as they are. And then I decide whether, you know, through my interactions with them, whether or not that's something that's going to be for me and for my life um, or whether it's not. And, and that doesn't mean that I harbor any ill will or um, any anger towards people. It just means it's just not meant to be. And then so I move on or they move on or whatever the case may be. I let them kind of float out. Um, I don't not speak to them. I would always answer my phone calls um, most of the time. Um, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't find the need to continue to try to build a relationship with someone who um, is either making assumptions with me or does not follow the same path that I do. And, um, or, you know, generally not, not specifically, obviously we're all different, but, you know, tries to, tries to be impeccable, tries to, um, not take things personal, tries to communicate, um, and takes those steps and, and makes those efforts to communicate and stand on what they believe in. And then the fourth agreement is to always do your best. And I have to, I have to say, I surprise myself sometimes <laughs> with uh, some of it. I'm told not to be so nice. That's not going to happen. The reason that's not going to happen is because I feel as if I sense that that is being brought to my, to my attention as if being nice is a bad thing. I don't find that it is. 
I think if you always do your best, you you can um, you can change the the direction of your day. You can change the direction of other people's days. You can change your work environment. You can make um, something sad happy. You can make something stressful not so stressful. You know, we're all here to live the best life that we can possibly live. And when someone tells you, and I've had this by, by two people that I, I worked with, I was told not to be so friendly. And it was because when people would come and ask me to do something, I would help them. Now, I come from a, a background where, you know, I just do, did things really fast and I would, I would drop the, what I was doing and flip to the other thing. Now, what I will accept out of not being so nice is not to multitask the way that I was multitasking that I will accept not being so nice. I can't accept that. And I don't take it as a dig and I don't, and I don't harbor any ill will towards the, the two people that told me that it's just their view of what they thought was happening. Um, I think that scheduling differently, not, not having to jump because my entire career, as I had explained to this one person, my entire career was multitasking. You know, I had a, a very intense position where I was managing lots of people, lots of projects, lots of things, lots of moving pieces. And so there was always an interruption and I was used to that. That's how I have lived my life with consistent interruptions. I mean, even at home, you know, you try to work because I, I would go to work during the day and work for others, but then I would also work at home and then I'd have the constant interruptions, whether it be my partner or my kids or an animal or something, an emergency in the house. Um, so it was always something, right? So I was used to bouncing and, and um, holding several balls in the air and trying to juggle so many things. And I think that, that, that I can accept the fact that I don't need to do that anymore. And so that I could accept, but not being nice. I'm not going to accept that. No. And I don't think anybody else should either. I think our world needs more nice. I think our, our work environments need more nice. I think our, our, powers in not only the world, but in work environments, in um, volunteer settings and, and events, social events. I think more nice is what we truly lack right now. And that's what we need. So if those folks that did tell me that are listening, like I said, I hold no Ill, Ill will at all. I accept what you said. I just think that you meant it in a different way. And I'm going to, I'm going to walk away with that. Um, because I think being nice is super important. Um, but always doing your best is, is part of that, right? Being nice is one thing, making sure you can, um, juggle all the balls you got going in the air is something else. Always doing your best means that if you're juggling these and you make promises for six of these, you need to make sure that those promises are, are realized and, and uh, are done in a way that is of good quality, right? And to make sure that you always do your, do your best. That's, that's agreement number four. And so, um, and also through that, right? So in, in any one of the circumstances, you want to make sure that any of those, those situations that you have juggling that, and you're trying to do your best, 
you need to avoid that self-judgment, that harsh like self-judgment and the negativity in your mind going that if you fall down, if things don't quite work out the way that you had hoped, if you have some regret in how you were able to, to juggle or not juggle certain things or not, not be all that you had expected or hoped to have been in any one particular moment or event or project or whatever job, you need to understand that that's just room for you to grow. It doesn't mean that you are um, a failure. It doesn't mean that you can't succeed in the future. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're not valuable. You are 100%. It means that you tried. And, it, and through trying, if that was your best trying, then you, then you did it, right? It just means you need to either learn more or study more or whatever more is, right? There's, there's something more that, that you needed to learn or engage in that you didn't have the tool to, to, in the first place. Because if you truly believe that you showed up in your best light and, and you have no regret, then it, and you still fail, then it just means you were lacking something. And it's up to you to find out what that is or to seek the guidance to help you find out what that is and to be open to it, right? To, to not take anything personal, including your own failures. Because the only way to succeed in life is through failing. You have to fail to be able to make it to the next thing. You know, if you, if you succeeded at ev absolutely everything that you do, everything, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about anything. You succeed every single time you do absolutely everything. Are you really learning anything? So those are the four agreements. I just thought it was super interesting. I love that they gave me a little printout of it, which I shared with you this evening. That it was wonderful and you know i think it's really important nowadays especially right now that we all try to do our best we all try to be impeccable with our word do our best don't take anything personal and to not make assumptions that's that's the one that will actually make the most difference i mean they all will and and they should all be used every day but the not making assumptions and not standing in a victim stance, that is going to want be the one that changes your life the most. I promise you that. So, and that means not making assumptions on, you know, how your parents are, how they treat you. That's not making assumptions on, you know, your nasty old grandma that comes over or your, your crazy aunt or whatever, whoever, not your boss who seems to hate you, not your, you know, your coworker, nothing. Or your friend that hasn't called you in a really long time. Never make assumptions because you don't know what people have going on in their life. The best thing you can do. And also, you know, funny about that, because just brought to mind, um, a lot of bosses, a lot of people that are supposed to train people take um, take the victim stance. They, they, they make assumptions. They don't train properly their staff. They don't take that time in, at the forefront to train their staff the way that they want them to be. They just assume that they're going to be okay. And then they get angry, take the victim stance when the person is not showing up the way that they want them to. And I've seen this time after time after time, especially in all of these um, investor owned businesses. I find that um, a lot of the staff members tend to leave pretty quickly after they show up because they, they don't feel they have the guidance that they should have and they don't have the support that they feel like they should have. Now, are they taking a victim stance? Probably. But I also think after watching and seeing some of this, that a lot of that's true. They don't. And, um, and I think that the supervisors or the bosses, whatever you want to call them, 
they are not taking that, that initial time to really train their people the way that they want them to be. And then, um, you know, and then playing the victim when the work isn't, isn't up to what they had expected. So they're holding expectations over people that have not truly given their best to. And so it just seems to be an ongoing pattern right now. A lot of these um, investment clubs that are buying all these businesses across the world, um, they grow fast exponentially. So, and, and kudos to them because it's amazing of, of what they're able to build in such a small, small amount of time. But I think that um, when they start building these spider webs, um, things start to fail. You know, they don't have their their thumb on some of the things that really need to be looked at. So just my two cents. I hope this helps. And, you know, I absolutely uh, think that you should pick up the book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, I believe, R R U I Z, and um, it's a it's a good read. It's something great as a guidebook to help you if you're really feeling lost in the world or you're just starting your journey and you don't know where to turn. That's a great start. My sister gave me that book years ago, and it uh, it made a big difference in my life, and it still is, obviously, because here I am still talking about it. So, you know, good luck and. Peace. <laughs>